Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Our greatness in every ramification financially, spiritually and otherwise oh I receive what he wants to give I receive it, no religion would preach me out of this no piety no sense of false holiness will push me out of the revelation, it is as a result of the, my love for the king that I need to gain an influence across the mountains that he has given me the authority to legislate so that they will hear the word of the Lord. Distant shores and the islands will see your light. Don Moen got it precisely. That's what will happen to you. Distant shores and the islands will see your light. As it rises on Thank you, Jesus Christ. So what is the secret of greatness? How? I know that we keep, you know, the, the issue the issue I have with the body of Christ is that we do a lot of preaching, but we do very little of teaching. You know what it means to preach? To preach means to declare. It means to proclaim. It means to bring you into an awareness of a reality. That's what it means to preach. But to teach means to give you understanding of the operation of that thing. Hallelujah. That's the challenge with the body of Christ. We do a lot of preaching. God wants to make you great. How many of you believe you are going to be great? Say me. Say now lift up your hands. Be great. And the person says amen. That's preaching. Wonderful preaching. Except for the fact that it does not work like that in the that's not how your lecturer taught you. He didn't come to the class and say, how many of you are interested in having a degree? He says, me, oh, me, I've, I've been writing jam. And he said, are you serious? He said, all right. This course is yours. No, you don't, you don't behave like that. Hallelujah. You sit down through seasons of dealings that will prune you. You will cry through the rain, but you will remain there for the excellency of something that is greater than your pain. Hallelujah. How come life teaches us an obvious way to be great? But when it comes to the kingdom, we don't pay attention to the teaching of the word. Carry a weak hundred level student, pastor, as weak as whatever. Sit that student down for six years under a medical curriculum and you produce a doctor. Bold enough to confront sicknesses and diseases. The same person who will see someone six years ago convulse and be confused and not know what to do. Six years later, he sees someone convulsing and while everybody is moving, he says, no, no, I know what to do. Everybody say knowledge. Knowledge keeps you in charge. So what other people are running away from you stand. You say, uh-uh, I'm not ignorant. I know exactly what to do. The Bible says Jesus himself knew what to do. May you know what to do in this life. It's dangerous not to know what to do. When the devil throws sickness, may you know what to do. When poverty attempts to come, may you know what to do. When death and all these things that kill men, if you don't know what to do, it will kill you. Don't let anybody preach you out of this truth. It's on the strength of what you know that you reign in this life. He said, rule down in the midst of your enemies. And he made two great lights. One to rule in the day. And the other to rule in the night. When you have that light, you will rule both in the day and the night. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Say after me, God wants me to be great for the sake of his kingdom. Say it again, God wants me to be great for the sake of the kingdom. And I choose to cooperate with him. I made some very interesting discoveries. One of my goals in life is not to waste my time on earth. 
one of my very personal goals in life is that I'm not going to join the crowd of people wasting their time on a, this is how they do it, this is how they do it. Uh-uh. I choose to be like the Bereans. The Bible says they sat down to find out how is this thing done. So you don't waste 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 years of your life. Then you find out that you've been making a mistake for 60 years and you have to go back and begin to undo your life. Hallelujah. There are people who have time but they do not have the knowledge and the information to make them great. By the time they spend all the time in their dying days, they get the knowledge but there is no time to put it to work. You have time and God is granting you knowledge. Take advantage of it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The secret to greatness in the kingdom is encapsulated in one word. And I know you've heard that word, but tonight, just keep away what you've heard and listen and let's explore the word. The secret of greatness in the kingdom is hidden in one word. And that word is called favor. Write it down. We're going to be exploring something tonight. The secret of greatness in the kingdom is shrouded in one word favor ah, open our eyes tonight in the name of Jesus bring the days of struggling to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ the secret to greatness in the kingdom is favor hmm. what is favor favor means access beyond your efforts when you gain access beyond your efforts. Many of us have had a lot of messages about favor. But many of them have not been balanced. And so we know so much about favor. But we see very little or none of it in our lives. Hallelujah. The first thing I want you to know about favor. Is that favor is not a mystery. This is one of the things we have been taught by well-meaning people that favor in the kingdom the fact that it is undeserved does not mean it cannot be activated thank you Jesus favor means access beyond your efforts it means divine approval unmerited access Favor is unmerited, but it must be activated to walk in your life. So many of us have been taught that somehow in the journey of your life, favor just finds its way to your life. You may wait forever and never see that favor. Although it is unmerited, there are laws that activate its coming. It is the operation, the, the dispensing of favor. That you cannot explain. And I will tell you why. But the initiation and the maintenance of that realm of favor is absolutely predictable. Absolutely. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Is someone getting blessed already? The Bible teaches us that there are two levels of favor. Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Please, let's have it. If you can have it in Amplified. If there's no Amplified, no problem. I want to hurry up because I want to dwell on certain things. This is just an introduction. There are two levels of favor or two dimensions to favor as, as revealed in the word of God. Okay, let's, let's just open up so we can hurry up. I don't want us to wait here too long tonight. Okay, please just look up so we'll hurry up. Everyone, let's read. One, two, read. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in broad and full understanding, and in stature and years and in with and favor with who and so the bible shows us that there are two levels of favor please get this there is favor with god everybody right and there is favor with men 
And these two levels operate on different sets of laws. It is absolutely possible to have favor with God and not have favor with men. And it is absolutely possible to have favor with men and not have favor with God. Someone getting blessed tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Favor with God and favor with men. Since we have established that the key, the secret to greatness in the kingdom is favor. Everybody say the secret to my greatness is favor. Say it convincingly. The secret to my greatness is favor. Hallelujah. Oh, how true. How true. You neglect this truth to your own detriment. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Hope is rising for someone tonight. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. How do you secure favor with God? This is the first part. Let's discuss it very quickly. How do you secure favor with God? We are being very mathematical in our approach this night. So the secret to greatness is favor. We are examining that subject since that is the key that holds our greatness in the kingdom. And we have seen that according to Luke 2.52, there is favor with God and favor with men. So how do we secure favor with God? Number one, you want favor with God, you need three keys. The first key is that you must have the fear of the Lord. Please don't make a mistake about this. You want favor with God. The first requirement, are you seeing now that favor with God is not free? Huh? Huh? I get very, very disturbed at the gospel that makes believers irresponsible. Just makes them believe that everything can just happen like that. No, sir. If everything just happens like that, God has to apologize to the little children and the countries that die. Is that true? If it was entirely God that controls the distribution of wealth, then God will have to apologize as to why a terrorist group will be so rich and a ministry will be so broke. Are you getting my point now? The heaven of heavens is the Lord. But the Bible says the earth has he given to the sons of God. The fear of the Lord Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10. Media, you help us please. We need a lot of speed here. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10. You must possess the fear of the Lord. You want to secure favor with God. Proverbs 9 verse 10. The reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord. Let's just use um, King James except where we went from before so that we rush. The fear of the Lord is what? The beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. You want to be wise? You want to walk in wisdom? The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning. It takes wisdom for you to even explore the mysteries of the kingdom. And the Bible says the fear of the Lord is what gives you that access. That's where your journey begins. Everybody say the fear of the Lord. What does it mean to fear God? It doesn't mean to run away from God. To fear God means to have respect. You can replace that word fear with the word reverence and loyalty. It doesn't mean to run away from him. No. The fear of the Lord means to have respect. Hallelujah. I will reverence you, Lord. 
something the bible says in psalm 25 psalm 25 verse 14 he said the secret things of the lord are not with them that pray in tongues not with christians not with those who fall under the anointing not with prophets not with apostles the secret things of the lord are not even with them who have faith the secret things of the lord the things of the lord are with many people but the secret things the hallowed bread of the spirit they are with them that fear him he said as an as a result he will show them he never said the things of the lord there are there are many things but the secret every great man has secret it takes only a fool to share everything to everybody you don't do that you don't have visitors come into your house and your mother says come let me even show you we bought a new mattress come inside our bedroom no hallelujah but there are certain people because of the depth of reverence maybe a worker in the house who respects that man you the person can even have sons that are irresponsible but he will call a house help into his bedroom and say let me show you something the secret things there are chambers in the spirit my brother and everywhere is not accessible to everyone although we are in the kingdom the secrets of the lord he said i wept for no man was worthy to open the book the book is there but it is not everybody who opens it hallelujah The clearest proof of your reverence for God is to keep his commands. I want to give you a spiritual litmus test. And let's look at that very quickly in John 14 verse 21. John 14 21. The clearest proof. Don't just say I fear God. No, there are exact parameters to measure. I love the kingdom. It doesn't leave you to confusion. You can know here and now, right now. I don't care whether you've been a preacher for 20 years. I don't care whether you cry if any song is being raised. The Bible says, he that hath my what? So it's one thing to have it. Is that true? And does what? And keepeth them. He it is that loves me. That has respect and reverence for me. And as a result... He that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Is that in your scripture? That means God is saying, I will come, I will reveal dimensions to him. He that obeys me is he that loves me. It's not enough to just say, I love you. I fear you. I will. There are so many believers, talk is cheap. First John 5 verse 3. The Bible gives us another very clear test. First John 5 verse 3. Oh, Shibakatalabako Rasida Baladabai. Somebody is changing in the name of Jesus. First John 5 verse 3. Can we read together? One to read. For this is the what? Love of God that we keep his commandments. And the Bible says his commandments are not burdensome. The word grievous, there is the word burdensome. Hallelujah. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. His commands 
are not burdensome. Please don't let anybody fool you. There are laws in the kingdom. I've said it. These things are, it's not the law of Old Testament. It, they are the laws that give structure to the kingdom. The laws of the kingdom are like the skeleton in a man's body. That's what gives form and structure in the kingdom. Hallelujah. You must have the fear of the Lord. You must have the spirit of reverence. So I can look at your life and know whether you fear God or not. Hallelujah. Don't say, ah, I, I fear God by faith. Even him, he knows. Uh-uh. There are exact parameters. You're not walking in his ways. You're not living by his principles and his value system. Don't tell me you fear God. When you can you don't know the difference between church and a disco hall. Between well, believers don't in this side of God's kingdom are not so involved in all those things again. But there are all kinds of things we do. And we believe. Listen, please and please, and I, I don't I don't mean this, I don't mean this to um to discredit ministers and ministries in the body of Christ, but I've said it again and again that the message of grace is only an accurate message. If it is accepted as part of the full gospel are you getting my point the whole gospel must be preached there is a level to which the grace message is taught and just tells you oh don't concentrate on your love for God concentrate on his love for you and concentrate on all of that and you know anything will happen everything has been done wonderful what then is the reward of obedience why then is there hellfire if everything is like that God must apologize to Ananias and Sapphira don't you think so was it not in the New Testament they fell down and they died why couldn't he have at least given them a chance maybe they will repent later on how could a loving God make the lake of fire hallelujah seven churches in, in the book of revelation when god began to talk to them he was focused on their works i know your works i know your works is, is that in your bible brothers and sisters be careful hallelujah honor the body of christ but you must realize that if the gospel is not taught holistically it can lead people into error. There are a lot of people missing it and dancing around in ignorance, believing. Are you getting my point? Let me share with you something that will surprise you. D.L. Moody. Many of you have read about him, right? D.L. Moody was a mighty evangelist of God. And he came and preached for decades. When D.L. Moody died, sir, after 10 years, they decided to do a like a little census to follow up the converts of D.L. Moody. Please listen. This is, this is not an exaggerated statement. Hallelujah. And they found out that only one out of 10 converts of D.L. Moody were still standing in the faith. Are you getting what I'm saying? I respect him. I honor him. Hallelujah. It was, look at such a great man. After laboring, they found out that most of the people who were coming out in his meetings, only one out of ten remained safe and were still in the faith. We're not talking of people who built ministries. Those who were still eligible to make heaven according to the, the standards of the word of God. What happened to all the emotionalism that happened in those meetings? And then they took the same census for a man called Charles G. Finney. Hallelujah. And they found out most of the great men you see, most of the great men, they were products of that man's revival. When you got born again in his meeting, you hear everything that keeps you in the faith for life. Something is wrong with our gospel. It's not incorrect, but it's not complete either. There are missing sides that we must couple together. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. 
God is a loving God, but God is also a just God. Hallelujah. What I have just told you now is called the gospel of the kingdom. It switches dimension and lets you know that Jesus is not only a savior, but he is a king. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We have allowed people to do all kinds of things. There are believers today who have all kinds of pornography on their phones, their laptops. They watch it and the moment the Holy Spirit wants to convict them, they say, I'll never feel guilty. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Tomorrow they go back and do it again. Somebody goes, come on now, let's, let, I, you know, you trust me, I love you too much not to tell you the truth. People sleep around and do all kinds of things. And yes, God is a forgiving God. There is a difference between a challenge in your life and the spirit of rebellion at work in your life. Rebellion is a perpetual, willful, continual state of violating God's principles. And the consequence is hellfire. I don't care whether you're a pastor or whether you are whatever. Please take what I'm saying seriously. Hallelujah. Paul, the one who brought what we know as the Pauline epistles. If his gospel was so pleasant, I have a question. Why did they stone him? Have you ever wondered, why did they stone him? What did he say that got the people angry that they stoned him? Hallelujah. Why did they behead James? It wasn't just because they were angry at them. There was a content that we are missing today. And that's the reason. I'm telling you, this is why many believers are not powerful. Anything comes and just throws us down. Because there is a content of the gospel that needs to be re-examined. Now don't carry your zeal and go and listen to every message a man of God is preaching and you get up and say, I know better. That's foolishness. I hope you understand that God is granting us maturity. But I am just telling you that as much as the grace message is good, it only makes sense when it is incorporated as the whole truth. There are many other components of the kingdom. What's the formula for water? The chemical formula for water is what? H2O. Is that true? Just add one more um, what now of oxygen. It becomes H2O2. What is that? Are you seeing that? Same thing that can be water now. For adding something wrong, it can become poison at once and kill you. Everything in the kingdom must be taught within the dimensions that Jesus kept them. Hallelujah. I'm saying this because there are people who will be listening to these teachings all across and some of you, God is going to trust you with ministries. You will have your churches. Please don't be afraid of being criticized. You must stand and teach the truth. Are you getting me? I remember somebody who sent me a text one day and said, please, um, I have a problem with you praying for people. How do believers just manifest and you say you are casting out demons out of them? Is that really true? And I, I just sent the person my text. I said, I love you. We see from different perspectives in the kingdom. And God will help us. We operate from the perspectives that we see. And that was all I said. Praise the Lord. Ay, ay, ay. Time is a revealer. I hope you know that time time there are some things you should never talk about time just allow time to pass time that's why sometimes you say something and God keeps quiet hmm. people just say you will never make it and God never responds and you are saying God God has already spoken time is a language in this realm it can speak so loud brothers and sisters when we started this thing you are seeing I cannot tell you how many people criticize the things we are doing. They say it won't last. I, 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 I saw many zealous pastors. Those of you who were around those times, you know that it was madness in this side of God's kingdom. Everybody was doing everything. People carrying briefcases and ladies all around them. I am this, I am that. People scrounging to go for radio programs and all of that. 
and some of us look like fools but he has chosen the foolish things with everything with everything we will shout for your glory with everything with everything we will shout forth your praise oh oh oh, oh, oh. If I mislead you and I teach you error, the God of heaven is going to judge me. Even if I don't love you, I love my destiny. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible says, ask for the ancient paths and walk in it. I'll never forget one minister. I've, I've shared with you the story. That guy's ministry was grounded. Things were tight. There were all kinds of demonic things, but that guy would never accept that there was a demonic problem. No, no, there's nothing wrong. Nothing was happening. And one day he summoned courage to come for counseling. And so as soon as he entered, I saw a spirit enter with him. And he just came, just sat down. And then he was telling me all kinds of things. Things are not exactly working, this and that. I said, my brother, I need to pray for you. Ah! guy felt embarrassed his, his ego you know and you know we get deceived because you touch somebody and the person falls you just believe that it means God has finished working on you is that true and I was going to pray for the person the last thing he could remember was that he got down on his knees right scattered the place scattered the room and I, 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 I said look at this is the same person who will argue and maybe insult me and write articles and write all kinds of things this guy got up went back to his ministry and boom goodness how a man can sit down in ignorance for years whereas in two minutes of humility your destiny can open up how how believers in the body have sat down in ignorance their salvation is closer to them that they can never see. But it takes meekness to receive the word. You can be dying. There are families that can be dying in situations. Whereas the arm of the Lord is not short that it can save. What is keeping you from entering the next level of your life? Could it be that that brokenness. There is nothing wrong to accept that. Oh, this is what I used to believe but I've seen clearer now. Lord, help your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's hurry up. We're still talking about how to secure favor with God. We have to rush. Number two, you must have faith in God. You want to secure the favor of the save, the um, the favor of God in your life. Remember, we're talking about favor with God. You must have faith in God. It's very important. James 5 verse 4 tells us this is the victory that overcomes. And it says, even our faith. You know what it means to have faith in God? I'm going to explain it to you. The first revelation of having faith in God is to trust Him. It's as simple as that. Trust Him. Don't complicate your faith experience. It means trust Him. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Verse 6 says, in all your ways, not some, in all your ways, recognize him, acknowledge him and his reward for your acknowledging him is that he will make straight your paths. And then verse 7 says, it's a warning. It says, be not wise in your own understanding. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Be not wise in your own understanding that means you can feel you are wise in your own understanding but he said fear the lord 
and that fear of the Lord will make you turn away from evil. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us that without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh unto God must believe that he is. In other words that he exists. And then number two that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It takes faith. Hallelujah. It takes faith in God. It takes faith in God. Very important. You must trust in the Lord. Psalms 125 verse 1. It said, They that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken. Hallelujah. Very important. They that trust in the Lord. When you have faith in God, it gives you stability. Through all of the boisterous winds that blow around our lives. Where are we? Okay. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which shall not be removed or shaken, but abides forever. Do you trust in the Lord? What is faith first and foremost? Let me tell you. Faith is never faith until it can be seen or heard. Let me shock you right now. Faith is never faith until it can be seen or heard. Faith comes from the Greek word pistis. Hallelujah. What that means is your faith is your persuasion or conviction plus the corresponding action you take based on that conviction. Are you getting my point now? If you have not acted on faith, it's called belief. It's not called faith. Are you getting me? Belief is just your persuasion. When you act Based on that belief, it becomes faith. So the Bible says, have faith in God. Become persuaded so much in the character of God that you take steps based on that conviction. So the equation of faith is revelation plus conviction or persuasion. Then plus corresponding action. Write it and never forget. Because faith comes when you hear the word of God. So it starts with revelation. Then that revelation brings conviction or persuasion. You are convinced about this reality you just heard about. Convinced enough to take steps. Then the Bible calls that. Without the action component is called belief. What many people are doing that they call faith is belief. That means not acting on the word of God is the clearest proof that you don't trust God. Not acting on the word of God is the clearest proof biblically that you do not trust God. So many people hear the word of God and we claim to be convinced. Let me tell you, in this life, the moment you are convinced about a thing, action is almost automatic. Hallelujah. A guy sees a lady and thinks he likes her and he keeps nursing that persuasion until it pushes him to say, Sister, please, after Koinonia, I'll be at this door. Will you mind passing there? That's action. Three guys saw the lady and said, wow, nice lady. I saw the way, you know, she's fine and she likes God praying. It's nice when a fine lady is praying. And that's all. He stopped and they all moved. But he was convinced and he said, look, I'm going to take a step further. Right? And he meets the lady. And then they get married. What is that? Action. Whereas there is another brother who kept saying, me, even me, God knows from the depths of my heart, this is my wife. And you watch somebody complete the equation and carry your wife. I just spoke about marriage. Some of you have woken up now. Ah! Brothers, you need this message before you carry any man's daughter to the altar. Hmm. That statement you make at the altar is so implicating. It will take a long time for you to see the the significance of that vow. Don't let your tithe deceive you. You are standing there just talking. 
will you do this everybody are just everybody i'm getting married after the marriage the rubber will hit the road your eye will clear my friend jimmy says love is blind but marriage will open your eyes praise god so let's hurry up number three i'm going to shock you now you want to secure favor with god the third principle is the type t-i-t-h-e ah. how many of us have been taught in our churches and our different groups that type helps you to secure favor with god even those who have taught about tithe just preach about it because there are bills that need to be paid and they say you need to pay your tithe if you don't pay your tithe you don't pay your tithe and see whether god will bless you and you see the anger with which the man is preaching and god tells you please please pay this tithe. every church every ministry their prosperity is dependent on their own obedience to the principles of the kingdom my prosperity as a minister of the gospel is not dependent on koinonia people ah that would have been a terrible way to live i would have been frowning at you for every week what did you drop last week you know? there are many men of god who are burdens to their congregations because they do not realize that their prosperity is tied to their own personal obedience can i be sincere with you many men of god don't tithe hallelujah many men of god don't tithe they teach tithing do you know how long it took me as a man of god to be consistent in tithing i want to be sincere with you you know i fear god and i honor god when i saw how difficult it was to tithe with all the fear that i had for god i said man that means many people, somebody is lying somewhere in this equation. It takes the giving grace to come upon your life. One, two, it takes you designing a system to make your tithing efficient. Are you getting my point? You don't tithe just, no, 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 no. The first thing I want you to understand about tithing is that tithing is not a debt you are paying. Many people come before God with tithe. Help me with one, one of these envelopes. And they, they bring the tithe. Thank you. Don't worry. They bring the tithe and they just stand frowning. Okay, God, please, so you will not harass me. Take. And once they pray, they say, it's blessed. Where you just drop this in the offering basket. Your tithe secures favor with God. You want to be on God's side, brothers and sisters. Not being on God's side is disastrous. It's not just about finances. There is a spirit called the devourer is alive and active in the earth hallelujah i must talk about this your tithe is not the payment of a debt because everything we owe belongs to god your tithe is an acknowledgement it's a documentation of your gratitude you're saying lord in obedience to you and for your faithfulness i bring 10 percent Brothers and sisters, hear me. Let me kneel down. Look at me. I'm kneeling down. Snap me so that you'll see it on, on the... Don't, I'm dumbing with your phone. I'm pleading with you in the name of the Lord God. If you love God, I beg you in the name of Jesus Christ, be consistent in your time. See, I'm getting down on my knees and I'm begging you. Ah, you've been snapping, no? Joe. <laughs> okay, let me just hands up so that you know that I'm kneeling down be faithful don't think tithing is a gimmick by a preacher i can tell you this ask the financial department by the grace of god as a ministry we do not owe god one naira. i don't care what collection is made for what the tithe of god before anything happens you really think we're running this ministry from the look you know what you are dropping in the offering basket at least you don't know your neighbor's own, but you know your own. You can't run ministry with things people are throwing. No. There is a mystery of divine supply. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You must believe this. 
I was sharing some of the testimonies with Pastor Williams. Benefits of tithing. I remember one time we were just praying and, and trusting God. There were things here and there to, 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 to get and all of that. And we were just saying, oh Lord, we thank you because we are tithers, we are faithful. Till today, I was sharing with you, Pastor. Till today, we do not know the person. We just got an alert, 1.5 million by an unknown person we do not know into the ministry account. Whereas, that's somebody's labor. Somebody who is collecting 50,000, how much is his salary? That calculate it for more than one year. For being faithful in time. I think I was talking to the protocol department. They went to purchase something in Abuja and then I was talking to them. The mixer. We just got a better mixer, very good one. And then I, I was talking to them. I think it was someone on my birthday. Pastor. Someone just, right? Yes. And the person just said, ah, they just paid some money for their family that they were hoping, you know, 3.4 million naira. And the person just said, oh, well, thank God for all the words you are speaking, the things you are teaching us. And was just sending the tithe and all of that. Let me tell you, when you see what we are doing, because I know many of you sit and wonder, how do these people really get money? Yes, God is faithful, but what is the one plus one of it? Let me tell you, the one plus one of it is what I'm teaching you here. The tithe. If you are not a faithful tithe, God is not authorized to bless you. Stop wasting your time in praying and fasting for wealth. If you are not a titan, I want you to know the devourer will stand and stare at your face. If you like, put a Bible on your head. Prayer is not the seed for financial breakthrough. Prayer is the seed for fellowship with the spirit and spiritual awakening and the presence of God and activating the anointing, not prosperity. Your tithe, your giving are the seeds for increase. Many people who want to be blessed will argue this thing. And you ask the person, how much do you have? How much has entered your hand that you are arguing? You are saying it's not correct. It's a terrible thing when you don't have results and you are still arguing. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. When you pay your tithe, you're securing favor with God. Please and please and please teach this to anyone you love and make up your mind from today. Your tithe is a tenth portion, one tenth of your income. That secures open heavens. Favor with God. Tithe. Because it guarantees God's continuous favor in your life. Oh, I don't want to be outside of the favor of God. It's dangerous. It's a risky position. It's like being face to face with a lion. Imagine how many devils of darkness will want on their own to destroy my life. I found a place of refuge. I found a way of walking under an open heavens. Do you know the wickedness? The arrows that fly by day. The noisome pestilence. Do you know how many people want to see your downfall? If there is no spiritual way of keeping yourself standing, you will fall like a leaf. Are you getting what I'm saying? How many people use all their monies for sickness? All their monies for no, no open heavens. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I make up my mind to be faithful in tithing. Say it again in the name of Jesus. See, the truth is many of us are not consistent. Our tithing life is up, down, up, down. That's why today it looks like some doors of favor open up and then tomorrow it's not God's fault. J.C. Penny, many of you have heard about him. J.C. Penny, one of the multi-billionaires who love God. He was typing and at a point something happened and he said he wanted to experiment with God. He stopped typing. That was how his 
business just knows died like that to a point that it was almost crashing and he said wow and he started tithing and that was how he, he got himself back you better believe what I'm telling you many of our parents do not tithe from their salaries they are collecting 150,000 yet they cannot afford 5,000 you ask them for 5,000 they will almost kill you because a devourer has eaten everything in one day two tires just patch and all the money has gone just when you are coming something happens arrows that fly by day and they now look and they say sorry you need you need this and that you will be spent and all the money goes then the moment the money goes the person gets well by himself the devourer and you are praying and fasting and conducting night vigils and running around your parlor in the night rather than obedience that is better than sacrifice many of us can prefer to run marathon prayers from 11 to 6 to try to solve something that faithfulness in tithing many of our fathers have brought predicaments upon the family because they are not faithful in tithing a solid building a solid structure small rain just comes and washes everything just when they wanted to finish the thing back to square one there are even those that physical money disappears have you had that story somebody keeps one million he comes back and finds seven hundred and eighty thousand. someone came for counseling i've never had that thing the woman say rats eat her money no serious I'm, I'm not joking i'm not joking at all rats you come in the morning and you see pieces of what sort of devil tithing i think it was either polenensho or, or, or bishop david Oyeriko that shared something that some armed robbers came and they were going to i think um destroy a woman or capture one family and the woman shouted she took her tight booklet lifted it up and dropped it on the ground and said god watch the people match this booklet and come and touch me at once confusion came on the people they were afraid and that was how they left brothers and sisters what you do not believe will not work for you oh i believe the word of god i'm that minister of the gospel that believes every word of jesus are you getting blessed Leviticus 27 verse 30. Let's finish up on the issue of tithe very quickly. Leviticus 27 verse 30. Let me show you how the devil has been cheating many of us. Tithe heals you from greed. Everyone let's read. One to read. Is the Lord's and it is holy unto God so when I take my tithe I say Lord I'm documenting my gratitude I honor you I thank you how many of our parents receive some money maybe one money that is spending it just comes in seven million and they just calculate use calculator seven hundred thousand me go and give that man of God I'm not stupid Abba seven hundred thousand and you see the person arguing and within three weeks he has spent over one million naira on his health and robbers will come and put a gun and say we saw through the jazz that we use that there's seven million in this i say no it's only four no now slap me say truly it's, it's seven where is it he said that's it here take it take it and preserve my life whereas the tithe of it are you seeing how many of our family members put us in trouble I say this many of us keep wondering why is my father walking why is my mother walking the truth is that they are all walking they've never been driven from job but not even a house to build the mysteries of the kingdom there is no favor the heavens are closed so many believers operating under close heaven there are many ministries they are so tight no supplies they beg for everything squeeze people put people workers and all of that under every kind of pressure because the man of god is not tithing the people are not tithing the ministry is not tithing dr mike mudok was sharing and he said there was a time the finance of his ministry was going down 
it was going down so bad and he checked and then he called the finance department he said something is wrong we are not doing something right what is wrong hallelujah and the financial secretary said well sir um for about three months now we've not been paying tight because the bills are enormous and honestly if we are to pay tight you may we may shut you down from tv and all of that and my bulldog said because of that you stop paying the tide that means we are going to crash to zero the day we stop paying tight as a ministry i give you one to two months it will never happen that's why i have the confidence to say it maybe one day you come and you just see no fuel for generator or no chairs ah no as surely as the god of heaven lives we have created a system that does not depend on our personal emotions again. Is someone learning something? Is your heavens open? Pastor, is your heaven open? Over your family. There are many people who do not tithe. They pay school fees. 250 naira. The, the child, brilliant boy, is coming back with one dull result. Zero, 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 39, 41. That's the average. What is happening? All kinds of witchcraft activities flying freely because the heavens are closed. Are you getting blessed with what I'm saying? You want to secure favor with God? You must be faithful. We've not talked about favor with men, no. And that's really where I want to dwell tonight. That's why I'm rushing. I'm not teaching on finances, so I'll stop here for you. We're going to pray just in one minute before we continue. Many of us need to repent because the financial stress in our family is not because of the job. It's not. It's not because they didn't promote your father. I'm telling you the truth. If we don't take responsibility, we will keep giving. It's easy to blame people for our financial predicament. Are you getting my point? It's so easy. If that they promoted me, I would have been collecting 200,000 now. Instead of 150, my life would have been better. So wrong. So wrong. You collect 1 million under a closed heaven. And you will see the way the devil will make a caricature of your life. Lift up your voice in one minute and say, Lord, I repent. Be sincere with yourself. Some of us need to pray on behalf of our families. Please be sincere. Lord, I've not been faithful. Tithing. I don't know what it is, oh God, but I find out that it's so hard. I've not had the revelation. I'm not yet convinced. I think it's a gimmick by a man of God or a ministry. I think it's just a gimmick. Koinonia is trying to squeeze out money from me. No. Go ahead and pray. Because there are many of us, no matter how many miracle services you come, I'm telling you, the heavens are closed. The heavens are closed. There is no favor with God. That's why the doors that were opened before, they are not even open again. Be sincere with yourself. There were strange manifestations of favor from God. They are not even there again. Your shop that used to sell, nothing is selling again because you think you don't touch for your business. Now the heavens are closed. Look at many of our parents. You buy a new gadget, you bring the machine, everything breaks down. This is the devourer, brothers and sisters. Let's take responsibility tonight and say, Lord, we cry for help. The finance of families are finished because of paying for drugs and sicknesses. Paying for damaged cars. Paying for all kinds of things. Pray and say, Lord, I want your favor. From tonight, I repent. I receive the giving grace to be a delight some tighter. I realize that this is the key. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you read. I don't care what your level of anointing is. I don't care how hardened your heart is. If you want to experience favor with God, I'm telling you one of the keys is you must be a consistent tighter. You must design a system around your life. 
if there are needs in your life that's the more that's that's the more reason to tithe don't say the needs are too much man of god is because you don't know i have so much needs i must do this and that tight your way out of that trouble tight your way out of that trouble eating your tight will only get you deeper i promise you you can apply every business principle you know fail to tight and watch the devourer scatter your life and your family but you'll be faithful towards tithing and watch God turn any situation around it doesn't take time commit God into your life anything God is involved in must succeed many of us God is not committed in the affairs of our lives I don't want to know what you are going through now tight your way out of it secure the favor of the almighty hallelujah praise the lord please let me challenge you create a system if you do internet banking you can have the account details of the ministry or whatever or if it is here you tight the, the the ministry's account details are available to if you do internet banking transfer it immediately otherwise buy envelopes buy envelopes i always have a stash of envelopes praise god the treasurer is here we created a system i don't even see the tithe as it is counted we take it and 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 sow it to the appropriate ministry brothers and sisters please listen to me are you not tired of what you have seen your loved ones go through didn't they go to school didn't they get all the degrees look at everything see how helpless people are because they know not neither will they understand and the bible says they grow up in darkness and the earth is out of course let's finish the last part how do you activate and secure favor with men i must talk about this spoke about three things right now to secure favor with God that number one you must have the fear of God the fear of the Lord number two you must have faith in God you must trust him number three you must be a consistent titan but when it comes to finding favor with men the rule is different if you have been sleeping this is the time to wake up I believe with all my heart that your destiny depends on this revelation I'm sharing tonight Daniel chapter 1. Open our eyes, oh God. Daniel chapter 1. Help us. Grant us grace. Someone is walking in undeniable realms of favor after today. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to share with you something very powerful. How do you secure favor with men? In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. Verse 2. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hands with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure of his God. Verse 3. And the king, listen now, spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel. So the king is inviting some people to stand before the king. Hallelujah. And the kings, and of the king's seed, and of the princes. Verse 4. Everyone read. One, two, read. Children in whom was no blemish but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability take note in them to stand in the king's palace it takes an ability are you seeing that 
he said those who have what ability to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Let's stop there. Look up. There is a mystery to securing favor with men. And I want you to get this very straight. There were many people who were captured. But notice what Nebuchadnezzar said. He said there are a kind of people I want. The king that we captured now. I want all the people that walked in his palace. Because they have been trained according to the life of royalty. Bring them. I want certain choice guys that came from Israel. There were certain things that the eunuchs were looking at. Brothers and sisters, there is a price to secure favor with men. Can I tell you something? Favor is the currency to get money. Think about what I said very carefully. Favor is the currency to get money. Write this down, please. The ultimate key to entering the realm of favor with men. Never forget this for as long as you live. If you pay attention to this, we will celebrate together as the great ones in the future. But you neglect this, you will be part of those quarreling, those who will be the great ones. Listen. The ultimate key to entering the realm of favor with men is to possess the ability to provide solutions and solve their problems. Write it down. The ultimate key, I'll say it again, to entering the realm of favor with men is to possess the ability to solve their problems and provide solutions. Oh, Shiva. Write this down. Solve problems. Then write three ellipses. Provide solutions. Let's discuss this briefly. When I solve this, we'll tie it up by showing you how God announces men in the kingdom. The ultimate key, brothers and sisters, hear me. Every man in scripture who became great became great because he was favored. He found favor with men. And every man who found favor with men had something to exchange for that favor. Is someone getting what I'm saying? Joseph would have died in the prison if he never had the ability to interpret dreams. Daniel would never rise to reign in a strange land through the dispensation of three kings if he had no ability to solve problems. I say this all the time and some of us neglect it. Write that word down. Ability. Ability. This is your key to finding favor with men and entering the realm of greatness. Gender notwithstanding. Background notwithstanding. Age notwithstanding. Nationality notwithstanding. Hallelujah. Until you solve a problem, you remain insignificant and unnoticed. If you are not providing solution, brothers and sisters, nobody needs you. The world is so desperate for solutions, they will only run towards the direction of those who are solving problems. The greater problems you solve, the greater you become magnetic. Please understand this. If you think you will, people will invite you into their presence just because they like you or because you are a Christian, you are dreaming. Wake up. Hello? <laughs> you know, many of us have this funny understanding 
that because I'm serving God one day, great men will call me. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Start reading your Bible very carefully and you will find out that no great man appeared before the king just like that. There was an ability that qualified him to stand before the king. I have a question. What will qualify you to stand before men who can honor you and bring you into greatness? Are you getting my point? The reason why you may be insignificant as you think is because your ability has not brought you to a position of notoriety. Please hear, hear what I'm saying. All men are equal, but their graces and abilities separate them and make certain things possible for others. Your ability, that anointing, that skill, that grace, that gift is what you will use to access favor with men. There are people today by the grace of God who have come to see me and I know that if not for the grace of God, there is nothing I will have in exchange for the level of the honor of those people. Not at this level of my life. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are offices and places that I access today and bump into those people and I know the level of great men in themselves who cannot access those offices. The gift of a man can make room for him and bring him before great men. Your gift can add to your age. Your gift can qualify you where you do not qualify. And the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. We must understand this then I will show you how God lifts people in the kingdom. Say in the name of Jesus I have an ability that will bring me before great men. Say it one more time. In the name of Jesus, I have an anointing. I have grace. I have an ability that will bring me before great men. I have entered places today that my father may never enter, perhaps. I have entered places today that with all humility, my contemporaries maybe may never enter their lifetime because of the gift of God look when you possess this ability they told Jesus they said all men seek for thee all men they will pay you for it they will pay you in millions and think it's a privilege that they are honoring and you will be surprised you're wondering my goodness but there is an ability and because they need it they will look for you there are 7 billion people in the earth but more than 90% of those people are looking for solutions that's big business brother if you can become a solution provider you become magnetic see the darkness in Nigeria look let me tell you if you have a ministry that spits saliva on people's face and they get healed spit it on 20 people and let them get healed and you will see the level of intelligent people who will come and stand for days waiting to be healed many of us do not know the level of darkness that is upon the earth please listen the spirit of God is moving in this place right now because I, I want to share something very powerful there is an anointing you have that can bail you forever. There is an anointing. The ability that makes you to stand before kings. You will not be the one looking for them. The Gentiles will come. Not to you. To your light. That's what they want. Not you. If you think people come because they like you. There are many people who come for koinonia not because they like me. Oh. 
you'll be amazed to see how many people came to Jesus. King of the Jews, you are this and that. When it looked like Jesus' ministry was nose diving, they say, I beg, crucify him. Let his blood even be upon our head. Please listen. Let me just advise you. If you think you have a crowd or people love you because of you, there are very few people in your lifetime who will love you because of your personality. Many people will love you because of what you carry. Are you getting my point? See, Baba Lama, there is this treasure in earthen vessels so that you will end some things in your life. I will never be a failure in this life forever. I know it. I know it. Rich men have problems that I can solve. Ah, yes. Yes. Great men have problems that I can solve. I cannot solve every problem. But brothers and sisters, there are problems I can solve. Now, watch this. Let me explain to you the equation, what I call the equation of greatness. You will be so blessed. Just give me a few minutes and we'll pray now. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 1, media, project it. I love the Lord. When I did this study, my heart dropped. I said, oh God, I'm sorry for all the times that I kept blaming you for so many things. Ecclesiastes 9. Eleven, verse eleven. Did I say one? Eleven, please. Verse eleven. Everybody, please read. I returned and saw under the that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding nor yet favor to men of skill this is the mystery we're about to discuss now everybody read it but time and chance i want to show you the mystery of greatness listen repeat this last clause again one to go time one more time but time and chance happens to who how many everybody now replace the word chance where are we now Okay, but time and chance. Replace the word chance with opportunity. Are you ready now? One to read. I want you to replace the word time with the word seasons. Are you ready now? One to read. But seasons and opportunities happen to them all. But seasons. Like the hand of a clock. It has been designed by the sovereign act of God that for every man upon the surface of the earth there is the turning of the hand of the clock and that one day time and opportunity will always happen to them. Ah. Holy Spirit. Time and chance did the bible say it happens to some happens to everybody that means there is a guarantee please listen somebody's deliverance is coming there is a guarantee based on the word of god that a day must come if god is god where time and chance you know how they do cooperative society five of us bring twenty twenty thousand it's now your own turn it's now your own turn and i start smiling although it's not my turn because i know that my turn is coming for sure and the bible says time and chance so in the equation of greatness we are bringing the constant factors and then we work on the variables we are doing a little mathematics here are you getting my point it says time and chance this one no devil can stop it no herbal is from your village you don't need to pray about it he said time if you are under the sun time and chance happen to them ah i show you a mystery 
Ah. So time. That means a time will come in my life whether I'm prepared or not. Whether I pray for it or not. Whether I fast for it or not. A time will come where the hand of God will navigate opportunities. Whether I see it or not is irrelevant. God's justice must be done. Therefore, the Bible for wants us is a redeeming the time. Now that you know that a day will come, this is where a lot of people miss it. We keep focusing on looking at the day. The Bible says it will come. Remove that in the equation of your preparation for greatness and begin to focus on taking advantage of that day. It will come. The equation of greatness. Let's look at, um, okay. Greatness, therefore, in the kingdom comes by number one. God margins seasons and opportunities together and then number two you finding favor by securing that opportunity I'm going to explain myself let me have somebody please okay Aaron come hallelujah watch this Let's assume this is spiritual timing. And according to God's justice system, okay, stand here, Aaron. Please, that this time is going to keep moving. Are you seeing it now? And that a day will come. It may take a long time, but that a day is going to come when it will come to Aaron. And if Aaron misses on that opportunity, it will keep moving again. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why if God wants to help you in life, he restores years, not what you lost. Yes. He tries to bring back the time so that the mistake you made, you can remedy it. He never said, I will restore the goods because they are not necessary. Once there is time and those seasons, is somebody understanding what I'm saying? Now, the problem with the body of Christ is that we all sit down being distracted at looking at the clock and waiting for the day it gets to our turn rather than getting busy to sharpen that ability so that the day the time comes you will enter the presence of greatness once and never come out again forever. Every man in the scripture that became great waited for that kairos moment joseph was in the prison but he knew there is an ability to interpret dreams it's only a matter of time the brother sold him he said no problem pharaoh's wife lied that he wanted to rape her no problem they threw him in the prison but when the season comes that part of the equation is god that starts moving that's favor with god are you seeing that now god made it in such a way that the wine presser had to do something wrong to go to the prison so while he was in the prison the divine transaction started happening and the wine presser came out although the wine presser forgot about him but a day came let me tell you it does not take two days for you to enter greatness read the bible it always happened in one day there is always a day called one day he said john remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing John was sharpening himself in the wilderness. When the season came, he came out and he completed his assignment one time. Jesus for 30 years was preparing for a season of three years. 30 years. Read all the books. Knew all the law. Did everything and there was flawless victory within three and a half years. So there are many of us sitting down looking at people's cars and say man i like this jeep goodness ah bmw this and that ford explorer 2014 limited edition look at that foolishness we are there claiming i claim it time and chance your turn is soon coming create an urgency sharpen the knife 
sharpen the anointing sharpen the healing anointing one day see let me tell you you may say there are many people the bible says in israel there were many widows but to none was the prophet sent god will send people specifically to you and when you take advantage of that season that is it you are open to a dimension of grace i have studied almost every great ministry i admire and i found out that in the history of that ministry something always happened something happened at the kairos season and the men plunged into it with revelation and boom never to return again are you are you getting what i'm sharing with you ah i feel the anointing of the spirit if you sit down and you are wondering kai this house one day we are coming when will this come no 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 you never see me bother you insult yourself when you do that many young people here our dream is car right car let me buy a car and you are trying to save how much can you save for the car you want i'm teaching you a higher law get out of all those 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 ways of frustration and misery that's why many people cannot give god glory they suffer for everything in their life come and adopt the kingdom's way there is a higher dimension there is a higher way believe me look let me tell you i'm a businessman i've read many business books so don't you think i'm just talking nonsense i know what i'm saying hallelujah when that kairos moment comes in your life when it comes in your ministry some people are snoring through the night the time will pass they wake up and an opportunity that took 10 years has just passed before it will come back again the first son is graduating from the university he has not learned his lesson after 25 years it comes again prophecy comes in the name of jesus let restoration happen and by the mercy of god the time is reversed it comes again the same lack of preparation keeps bringing people down are you seeing why it takes more than receive it to walk in this realm you would thank me in the future for what i'm teaching you i'm teaching you the way to a superior life so that you stop blaming your parents and say if my father only accepted this job stupid man would have been out of this thing uh -uh, leave your father alone god is bringing you to a point i don't care what degree you graduated with i don't care there is a problem listen if you solve a millionaire's problem you have access to his millions it's as simple as that never be a failure in this life never so every time i spend in prayer i'm sharpening my giftings for that day a day will come when that season comes god will send a great man who can sow a seed of 100 million naira to koinonia the person will be dying of tuberculosis or something it's like that that's how it works there is always something you can exchange for and god will make it in such a way that on the day he's coming somebody will be bringing koinonia messages that one is god's part of the equation while that is happening i'm praying in the secret place greater wisdom oh god you can sleep in the night and not know that that is the last time you will sleep in that realm hi if joseph knew if Joseph knew all the people in the prison would have cleaned his shoe and said, Oga, oh it is within your bail me. Imagine the guy that bought Joseph when he was shaving Joseph. Little did he know he would have earned himself a position forever. Imagine those who were with the pre in the prison with Obas and John the night he would come out. If they had known that he would just come out never to return, they would have said, Oga, oh let's pray. Father, bless this man so that at least he will remember them. Beware of people that you keep mocking and say you are not this. You can't speak English very well. You can't do this and that and that. Beware, let me tell you. You know why? Because if you are not, if you don't take time. Please look at me. Let's just focus. God is just doing this thing. If, if, you, are, if you don't pay attention, 
can I tell you the truth? A day will come. You will find out that the same person you saw today. You looked at her. said, Mary, what is there? You will open an office that you feel from for two weeks. There are people today who are angry with me. They are angry with me because there were times when we could access one another. And at those times they could say a lot of things. Call me when they wanted. But I was doing something they were not doing. We were all laughing and joking. And today because of the difficulty in reaching me, they pick offense. It's not my fault. I refuse to remain at that level. I intend to grow. Be nice to people today. Let me tell you brothers and sisters. For those of you who look at people in Koinonia. And when we say greet one another, you just turn. You don't know who you are turning. Time and chance. He may come from a poor family. He may have one ton sandals. But let me tell you, time, the word you are hearing is sharpening you for that time. A day will come. There is something God has put in you. This is the justice of God. This is why every man can be great. Time and chance happens to them all. The day it happened to our parents, they were not prepared. They were there talking about others, criticizing others and the clock passed. And it went to one drunkard who just got born again and saw the time, took advantage of it. And they said, ah, is this not the boy on campus that was drinking? He was drinking, but he did something with his opportunity. Now he's a billionaire. He's a pastor. He's advancing the kingdom. Let me tell you something that happened. In 2008, I believe, I was in Accra for a retreat and something happened. Hallelujah. No, I think 2007 or so. I was in Accra for a retreat praying and seeking the face of God for the things that he was going to do. And while I was praying, my money had finished. I had nothing, not even to eat. Not even to pay for the hotel where I was having the retreat for that night. I finished praying. I was reading a book within the gates. It's a divine revelation book. When I read it, the spirit of God just told me stroll around. And I came out. I started strolling. I was walking like a fool. Time and chance. I want to share with you testimonies now. The Holy Ghost just said just keep walking. I was walking like a fool. I didn't know where I was going. Up to 25 minutes I was just walking. The next thing I saw a signboard. Welcome to Accra City Campus. And the Holy Ghost said, enter. Immediately I entered. The first person I'll meet is the SRC president. And the guy, listen, the guy looked at me. And the moment he looked at me, he said, how are you, sir? When he shook me, he just took his hand. He said, Jesus. He said, can you come to my office? Miracle number one. Listen, listen. True story. I want to tell you, I know what I'm saying. I'm not just making noise. When this guy brought me to the office, we didn't speak more than five minutes. He started shaking. Time and chance. And they ordered a meal. I first ate the meal. And then we attended their fellowship. I sat down quietly. After they attended, their, just like the campus has Friday fellowship. When they finished, I went to his office. Watch this. The moment I started talking. I started talking at about 2, 4. We rounded up that meeting past 9. When we started talking. The university esco started coming to the office one by one. They would come. This one would fall under the anointing and remain there. It was in that place I inaugurated the prayer group that prayed for the campus in Accra. In that Accra city campus. On that day, I'm still in touch with that gentleman. Again, his life changed. There was, they have their prophets like their, maybe what you would call an FCS president. Yes, after the the, the president would finish. He invited me again to Accra and I went to minister in a program. And it was a powerful and explosive program. I was even on radio. The radio and they did an interview. I think that was when we traveled with Bala, Alex and a team of other people. Listen, that's not the whole story. When I finished that night, the people came together past nine. They raised an offering of maybe equivalent in Naira now of maybe 30,000. And they gave me. I didn't even know how to find my way back. They directed me. I found my way. Paid for that night. And I ate a very good meal. I said it works. I remember in the room I was screaming. 
i said come on not it has equal value in any land you don't need to know nobody all this godfather nonsense let me tell you get out of it right now if god is on your side there is nothing nothing you cannot get listen the night i was supposed to leave those guys started crying because they would come and visit me in my hotel it was within three or four days their lives changed they said what sort of person i taught them on the kingdom it was an unusual open heavens so the last day they invited me again i prayed with them strengthened all the people you know bless them they had impartations and all of that and they raised me money again an equivalent of maybe say fifty thousand and then i returned back who would have helped me i don't have any uncle but the gift of a man the time and chance is god's own equation leave it for him god is speaking to someone tonight you have been crying and say lord when will it come god said forget about the issue of when are you prepared are you seeing that god delaying seasons is an act of his love that thing you have been calling delay you are not prepared if it had come before this message you would have blown it only for it to come back 10 years you open a shop nobody's coming god is saying uh -uh, i don't want you to miss be careful what you call delay some things may be the hand of god your job you didn't get the job god said i i don't want you to struggle there is something you can know you go for a job in four months you have become one of the executives it does not take time if you can solve the problem you will rise to the top all the days of my appointed time i will wait but while i wait i will sharpen the knife i will pray in tongues while i wait i will keep studying the word i know i'm going to stand before kings i must have contents to give them i won't talk like i'm talking before weak men i will stand before presidents a day will come it will be a privilege to air koinonia a day will come we will not just have one or two tv stations there will be many one billionaire can sponsor it for years but while that time comes we will pray we will fast we will travel let them call you a fool because there's no car what is car see a man came to mike modok because of something that he did he was begging mike modok to buy a car for him mike modok said i don't need it he said i i entered a covenant with god that every year till you die i'll be buying you the latest benz car one day i was passing around abuja and i saw all the mighty houses they were building around my tama and the holy ghost told me do you know how many of your houses are here no i'm serious god told me he said you will only build in life just for the formality the gift of a man the owner of that building will need me one day darkness is a mystery that announces light the world will be too dark one day they will need the anointing they will need it i'm telling you many of you have not been respecting what you carry i know what i carry i know what i carry it's an anointing of the spirit the nations can never 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 they can never deny the effect they may not like me but there is an anointing for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time i'm fasting i may be lean i may so carry but there is an anointing my father could not enter but there is an anointing there is wisdom there is the gift of god and i will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side there is a price to pay i don't blame anybody left now is to sharpen my ability higher i may not speak the kind of english you want but when i say it an anointing will leave you can deny my english but you cannot deny the anointing there is something see this is what i'm training you to become there is a sharpening you may not see it now the world will need you you will collect a salary of maybe a hundred thousand but your boss will sow a seed of five million to get out of trouble
can. Your ability, listen, we are soon going to pray. Your ability to maximize the moment opens you up to untold realms of greatness. Look at me. Aaron is here. Let me share with you his testimony. Permit me, Aaron, a bit. For years, many of you know how skilled Aaron is. For years, the kind of job he was trusting God for would not come. I know times when things will get a bit painful for him. And we kept encouraging. He will be listening to the word of God. But time and chance. A season just came, brothers and sisters. Supernaturally, he got a job. Two, he got connected with the deputy governor of Kaduna State. Within how many months, Aaron? That they, within two months, they moved him to go and head a unit in Joss. Now he heads a unit in Joss. And we're only counting. In all you're getting, get wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Through wisdom is a house built. And by understanding, it is established. Join, Join Apostle, Apostle Joshua, Joshua Selman of Eternity Network, Network International as he takes you on a journey into the wisdom of God's Word. It's intimacy. It's partnership. It's fellowship. This is Koinonia. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Forget not his benefits. We give you all the praise as a house of faith. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Before we start tonight, I just want you to begin to count your blessings and say, Lord, I count you faithful. I count you faithful. If you don't have anything to thank God for, you can pray in tongues. But I know that God has been faithful. Lift your voice and tell him thank you. Don't be ungrateful. For the life, the psalmist said, If the Lord had not been on my side, now may Israel say, voice and give him all the praise thank you Jesus thank you Jesus the doer of miracles in our midst the mighty God the one who is doing wonders glorious in holiness careful in the praises of men doing wonders Oh, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. You have not left us without a witness. We give you all the glory. Yes, Lord, we give you praise. Now, there are four levels of the operations of Satan in the lives of people. And this even includes believers. I will tell you why. Hallelujah. Number one, ignorance 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 this is the basis the foundation hallelujah ignorance satan thrives on ignorance the bible says in psalm 82 he said they know not when you begin to read from verse 5 down it says they know not you mustn't go there they know not neither do they understand Therefore, they grope in darkness, confusion, and the earth is out of course. He said, but have I not said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. He said, but ye shall die like men, men, and fall like one of these princes. So they know not ignorance. 
See, this is why if you're born, listen, if you get somebody born again, the next step is that the person will need to subject himself to the teaching ministry of the word. Are you getting me? The kingdom is like a school. You don't just know things just like that. When you are taught the word, then you are built understanding, comprehension. Are you getting me? Many of you get people born again and just leave them. And after two years, the people don't even know whether they are born again or not. They say, were well, you born again? They say, you mean coming out? Yes, I came out. But the person is not born again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So ignorance. Number two, deception. This is the next level. Everybody said deception. Deception is very powerful. Deception means to cause a man to err, to get into error. Deception. For instance, secular humanism is deceiving a lot of people, including the church, that there is nothing called Satan. That's deception. Is that true? Deception. They say the only Satan, the only devil you have is your mind. Destroy that devil. And let the giant, you say, put your hand in your stomach, begin to push it up. You are awakening the This is Christian science. This is metaphysics. Of course, I know there is greatness in you. The Bible says there is this treasure. But you don't do all kinds of metaphysical things. Uh -uh. There is a real devil. He's alive, roaming to and fro. Hallelujah deception number three and this is the one that concerns a lot of people manipulation and control you must get this the third level of the operation of satan and this is where a lot of people a lot of people even those we call witches and wizards let me tell you the truth look up there are very few witches and wizards in this earth if you know the condition to be a witch, you will know it's not free. It's not just signing fraternity with Satan. No. Hallelujah. Many of the people we call witches, many of our innocent mothers and fathers that prophets say they are witches and wizards, they are not. Are you getting me? Many of our husbands and wives, right now there are prophets destroying homes and families. Somebody just stands and looks at this lady and says this lady is a witch you know what he saw he probably saw a spirit behind this lady or he saw a vision and something that has to do with demonic manipulation he just said he's a witch are you getting me and everybody starts frowning at the lady at home you do anything he said i damn we said it witch or the wizard or it's wrong we have stigmatized people in the body of christ listen to me please Many people and those who are in the prophetic be warned. Many people out of ignorance have called people witches and wizards. We have called our fathers and our mothers. A woman who was there with her husband suffered with him. Now you say she's a witch. When she married the man, he had nothing. They were drinking gari together. They now suffered. God is blessing him. A prophet now comes to say, oh... It is true that that woman may be under yokes of darkness. Don't get me wrong. She may be under demonic manipulations that can even make her act out scripts that she did not plan. But that does not mean she's a witch. Are you getting my point? Even Paul the apostle explained this predicament. In Romans chapter 7, Paul began to speak. He said, with my spirit, I serve the Lord. He said, but in my body, I see another law working in my members. So that the things I do not want to see, I do not want to do, I find myself. So, you don't want to watch the pornography, but you don't know what happens. Once you load your internet, you just sit down. And although you are a man of God, or any lady you see, you just have lustful thoughts or people's properties. You can't see any, even if you don't need it, you carry it. This is a sign that there is demonic manipulation and control. Are you seeing that? You come back from church, your father just looks at you and starts quarreling and arguing. It's a sign that something is wrong. 
Anger is the clearest litmus test that you need help. Are you getting me? What did I say? Anger. I shared it with the school of ministry students. When we were teaching, I can't remember the course now. <laughs> Besides, anyway. <laughs> Praise God. I, are, you, are, you, are you following me now? Anger. Anger is the first sign that you need help. If you are battling with anger, I mean this kind of anger that you can break bottle with your leg and tear somebody's head to two and then later you fume and you calm down. You need help. Don't ever say it's from our family. Whether it's from where you need help quick. There are many angry pastors. There are many angry reverends. There are many angry husband and wife. Many angry people. Five areas of your life that when you see it consistently affected, seek help quick. Number one, your relationship with God. Relationship with God. Your relationship with God. Oh, the last point there is possession. Let me just finish it up. The last point is demon possession. That's the case we have with people like madmen, witches, wizards, occultists. Those that know they are occultists. They fly around and do all kinds of satanic things. Right? Now, look at me. The confusion is this. When you are ministering deliverance to people, if, if you don't discern in the spirit, all of those five things, the manifestation looks the same. Are you getting me? Whether someone is under the spirit of deception or under any kind of demonic yoke or influence, any kind of curse, whatever it is, you find out that sometimes manifestation, I mean falling down, is not necessarily a biblical sign. Are you getting me? The revelation of the word of God going forth. So it has nothing to do with falling and rising. That manifestation is just because of the fire of the word of God. And there are different operations of the spirit that are responsible for bringing this victory. Hallelujah. The Bible says when he comes, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Praise God. Hallelujah. What was I saying? Before we... Uh, not five. I was saying something. Some of you are not listening. Eh? Five areas. Number one, your relationship with God. This is because this is your connection to victory. So you see somebody who loves God. He may even be a pastor. But the next thing, this person has left God. Have you seen people like that? Left God so much. When you see and say, ah, sister. When you were on campus, you were on fire, you loved God, what happened? You are even camping in a guy's house, you are staying there, she tells you, sweet, this is Nigeria, don't open eye for me here. This is not any koinonia or anything, please. You see that? Satan affects your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He uses these tools, I've told you, to affect, because once he cuts that flow, you are already in trouble. The second area, so relationship with God and men. Let's just call that point one. God and men. You find out that your father who used to love you, your mother who used to love you, all of a sudden things start changing. How many of you have seen people like that? They start, you, you start irritating them. Even them, they don't know why what is happening. That's a sign. That you should deal with. See, I'm giving you spiritual intelligence. So that when you see certain things happening, your father and your mother, that when they come back, you know they're around because you hear a big kiss. Mwah! Now, when they're around, where is the food now? Uh -uh, something is wrong. Something is wrong. After marrying his wife for 20 years, and they're fighting now, and they're saying it's, it's irritable. Mm -mm, something is wrong. Be I'm saying this because when we get up and we begin to pray, you know what it is so that even when you are being delivered or being set free, you know what is happening to you and you will rejoice. Are you getting my point? Number three, finances. Number what? Number two, sorry, finances. A hole will suddenly be created in your pocket. There are people who walk like, like elephants. Have you seen people like that? Your boss just comes to you in the office and say, I don't know why. I don't like you. Please, you are fired. Ah, but you are fired. Come back tomorrow and collect the letter. I told you nothing just happens. Is that true? Nothing just happens. 
Nothing just happens. Number three, your health. Heterogeneous sickness is start evolving from everywhere. Especially ladies. One headache that comes like play and it doesn't go back again. You start hearing all kinds of sounds in your ears. All kinds of satanic things. And many of us just hear it and you just say hey, paracetamol. You take it, nothing happens. I'm telling you this thing so that for many of you who think you don't even, nothing is wrong with you. As I share it right now, you will see that you really need help. Hallelujah. Number what now? Have I said it or I'm about to say it? Number four, this one is very, very important. If you are married or marriage relationship, I mean, because family is a big deal to the devil. Are you seeing why when we minister to people, we don't leave their families behind? Family. There are many of us, your family members were living in peace suddenly one demonic tornado just came into your family and has scattered everything if your father is driving in the car with your mother you know he will face east your mother will face west where did you say is the junction this way and you are turning you just know that something is wrong let me tell you there are some things that are not the issue of counseling you don't counsel spirits out you cast them out this therapeutic so I'm not against if you if you read guidance and counseling we need your ministry may God bless you just add the anointing to it because let me tell you the truth just trying to counsel people you can't counsel a man out of lust and pornography say you see uh, uh, the way we are like this just make sure destroy the the modem and do no you need help or say don't be looking at ladies what is the meaning of that there are the world is full of all kinds of ladies you don't have control over why will you punish me and say i should not look at where everywhere or you know this is this is the religion that many of us are taking around oh in jesus name i'm not seeing this girl she's not beautiful this lady is pretty my brother you need help you need help period why is this lady dressing like that? That may be a factor, but you yourself, it has nothing to do. Even if she dresses from head to toe, you know you are not well the way you are. You need help. A lot of people excuse the need for help in their own life and keep blaming people. Why is this lady sitting down near me now? You need help. When we are praying, stand up and say, God, visit me. I'm tired of this miserable life. Visit me. I hope as you are laughing, you are getting angry. There are many hypocrites in the body of Christ pretending to have overcome a lot of things that is killing them down. There are many people who are greedy, as greedy as the devil. They will just pretend, oh, I may give, mm -mm. See, once you see yourself struggling to do certain things, it's a sign that there is no grace walking there. Hallelujah. And tonight we are going to deal with it. How many of you have seen our fathers? They come to church and they say, fathers, turn to your wives. They turn to your wife and your mother will eye him. Let everybody know there is trouble at home. Don't fake anything here. Let the pastor see it per adventure. God will reveal it to him and will solve the problem. You know, I counsel people. And sometimes, when the man is trying to be diplomatic, the mother will say, man of God, this is what is happening in this family. There is no peace. Period. The man is trying to say, well, since uh, I didn't get the promotion, things have not been happening. The wife would just say, since this suffering didn't start today, even before you got the job. You see, if you have an open heart before God, you are ready to be delivered. Once you start giving flimsy excuses, Tonight, there's no excuse. Whatever does not look like the Garden of Eden in your life, contend for it until it leaves. Your contention, I've taught you, is not a sign that you are not a Christian. It's a sign that you are interested in seeing the reality of heaven become true in your life. Hallelujah. Curses are real. Yokes are real. 
demonic covenants are real. Many families are under its influence. You don't cast out demons and principalities and powers and satanic manipulations just by saying, oh, Satan, go. The Bible says, for this kind, they overcame them by blood. The blood of the lamb and the words of their testimony. That's why there are many people that, please listen to me, if you get this, there will be big deliverances in your families and in your life. And then you will see that that thing you were calling sickness just disappears. Never to return again. Hallelujah. Are you ready for what God is going to do in this place right now? While I was writing my prayer request, I said, God, tonight is tonight. I want you to mean business with God. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Instrumentalist. We are going to pray. Very serious prayer for two minutes. Please rise up, everybody. It's time for your destiny to open up. It's time for your destiny. Listen. There are many of us here. You are the saviors that are representing your family right now. You know what I'm saying. There are certain families you are even the only one who is saved. And you know that if God does not use you to produce changes, things will never change. You are this savior that is arising from Zion. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and begin to give God thanks inside and outside for this word. Please, no distraction, no roaming up and down. Please pray from your heart, inside and outside. The power of God is everywhere. Please pray, 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 pray like you mean business tonight. You're not murmuring your prayers, you are praying. Yes, Lord, we thank you for your power. We thank you for your grace. Lord, you will visit me. Lift up your voice and pray. Lord, you will visit me. You will visit my finances, my job, my marriage, my family. You will visit everything about my life. And everything that is not in divine alignment. I permit you to change it tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Twice the Lord revealed to me the things that will happen this night. Twice. I spoke about deliverance because tonight is truly a night of deliverance. I know many of you have seen deliverance, but this night we are flogging it out with destiny. Something must open up. Hallelujah. And I prayed, I said, Lord, please, let it not just be a few people. There are people who need a miracle desperately. Hallelujah. And the Lord assured me as ever, His mighty presence. My altar is calling you. My altar is calling you. My worship is calling you, oh God. My praise is calling you. Show up tonight in a mighty way. My secret place is calling you, oh God. My prayer. Is calling you, Lord. My 
it is. Hear me? I don't care what it is. Every yoke of bondage and darkness you will receive the full dose of God's power tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I sense his anointing coming. Man brought Lord, my altar is calling you. My secret place is calling you. With my worship, I'm calling you. My worship. Hallelujah. See, right from outside. Well, this started while I was praying. But right from outside, as soon as I entered, you know how prisoners move and they tie chains. I was hearing the noise of many chains. Right from outside, as soon as the car dropped. Please take serious what we are sharing tonight. I want you to pray and say whatever degree of influence the devil is claiming over your life and your family this night this night please pray Yes, Lord. We expect a mighty visitation. Get angry in your spirit. I hear the chains falling. Yes. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. listen the Lord is showing me certain people you have been experiencing movements in your body especially your stomach please come out quickly things move physically physically in your body please come out quickly to break every chain please save our time save our time we have a lot of things to deal with to break every chain 
break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. 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 of you in front, lift your hands. That devil of darkness, lift your hands because that yoke is about to leave you. That snake, that moving object, for many of you, you will fully leave. I'm going to count three. Just those of you in front, I'd like you to shout Jesus at the count of three. It will jump out of you. Many of you will feel it physically. Physically, lift your hands, Father. Thank you. Let your fire at the count of three. Every stranger in this body on the mark said, Go one, two, three. Holy. someone is gone now your right leg you literally feel it move it's like a snake it moves there is a leg it ties your stomach literally you feel a lot of contraction it's going right now madam come hold my hands that's the lady i'm talking about bring her let her go now now out of her that devil of darkness shabakata tabakata sekete prosopata in the name of Jesus out go 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 I hear the chains falling I prophesy upon your life those of you standing Every foul devil of darkness that has found its way into your body that is responsible for all kinds of devilish infirmities. I command you to live now. I command you to live now. Return back to your seat rejoicing. We are going to take testimonies. Return back to your seat. Bring the lady. I hear the chains. I, I feel the chains falling. falling. Let her go. Out. Now. I hear the chains. I hear the chains falling. I see the chains. I see the chains falling. Lift your hands, everybody. I hear the Hallelujah. God is going to deliver families right now. Please lift your hands. There will be representatives of families right now. Let me tell you something. There are all kinds of things speaking against families. See, 
I have an apostolic calling. I'm not a pastor. Are you getting me? My job is not to just motivate you. My job is to destroy and annihilate the works of darkness. Are you getting my point? So we are going to pray. The fire that fall in this place right now. There will be a baptism of fire. Some of you will feel the physical fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. At the count of three, you're going to shout that name, Jesus. And as you shout it, many of you will be shocked. The power of God will hit you like a tornado. I tell you, it's not just you. God is visiting families right now. Inside and outside, lift your voice. Worshippers, are you ready? At the count of three, with the clash of the cymbal with every instrument, shout at the top of your voice, my God, let the fire of the Spirit visit families. Are you ready right now? One, two, three. That devil is a liar tonight. Please bring them out. Ultra, save time. Some of you join the ushers if they are too slow, please. I set it on fire. On fire. On fire. On fire. On fire. I set it. That devil that will not let you go must go for you tonight. I give the chains for it. Oh God, I give the chains. I give the chains. Lift your hands. There are still more people. Lift your hands, everybody. Just lift your hands. Just lift your hands. Just the clash of the cymbal. Lift your hands. Just the symbol. Lift your hands. The fire of God is still coming on people. Just lift your hands. Keep them lifted. Yes, Lord, let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Like the two of heaven. Right now, let it fall. Let no one stand. Bring them out. Kopo to chopa. Zakata pata. Zakata kata tata tata. Mighty deliverance is happening in this place. I tell you, brothers and sisters, whatever said you will not go tonight must go for you. I give the chains falling. Falling. Lift your hands. While still praying. There are many of you, listen, please. I'm just flowing as the Holy Spirit is ministering to me. There are many of you that your sickness is not really sickness. Bring them out, please. Your sickness is a demonic oppression. What you need is not healing. For These are the kinds of people God will visit right now. Hallelujah. Because I'm seeing blue flames in the sky. Instrumentalists, don't stop playing, please. Hallelujah. Blue flames. And the Lord told me this one is to take away the spirits that sponsor sickness. Lift your hands. Many of you will be very surprised. 
that certain things you have been calling diseases are yokes of darkness. Lift your hands, everybody. At the count of three, you're going to shout Jesus again. As you shout Jesus, many of you, those spirits will literally jump out. Jump out of your life. Are you ready now? Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands, everybody. Inside and outside, God is visiting everyone. At the count of seven, please, I want you to shout at the top of your voice. One, two, three, four, five. Get ready. Thank you, Jesus. Six, seven. Every spirit, spirits, spirits that sponsors sicknesses. Spirits, sicknesses, we only pray that sicknesses now. things that manifest like sicknesses. You keep wasting your money on drugs. It's leaving you. Don't wait till you come out. Deliverances are happening to people. Now all of those who are here, Satan, you and every demonic cohort, at the count of three you are living right now. Hear me, all these spirits. Now one, Two, three, go, 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 out, 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 out now, out, out, come out now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, listen to me. This is very important. The Lord is showing me someone you've been having. It's like something is hooking you on your neck. Just your neck. You try to cough as if you want to cough it out. Please, who is the person? The Lord is ministering to me. There's somebody with that situation. Please, once I call your case, don't waste our time. We are trying to beat time. Honestly, there is done. It will go now. Sister, look at me. Look at me. That thing will disappear. Hold my hands. Out. 
now in the name of Jesus my hands place one hand on your throat out now all of you just lay your hands there let me just pray at once please we are not playing pranks we are going to take some testimonies right away there are people who are receiving miracles right now please be checking yourself we are going to pray hallelujah lay your hands father let this demonic thing that is hooking your people go as a sign of the release you are bringing right now in the name of Jesus it leaves what's wrong with this baby come are you the mother yes sir what's wrong with him sometimes he's still hiccup hiccups look at this boy as small as he is stops now in the name of Jesus Christ it stops and does not return again in the name of Jesus Christ does not return again in the name of Jesus Christ and for you mother right now help her please this, this cause of delay in your life is gone now let her go leave her now I proclaim you healed now please go back and check yourself go back and check yourself hallelujah there is someone here hallelujah please are you listening to me it's like muzzle pool you can just be moving and it will hook you and you can just stand on your leg this has been happening again and again you feel it like muzzle pull it just holds your leg move please who is the person come just lay your hands there I'm praying for you right now it will leave you right now let's just flow as the Holy Spirit Please lay your hands there. It is going to go. Thank you, Jesus. Father, right now, let your power rest upon them and let that demonic thing go. Be gone now. 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 And as I lay my hands, just check yourself. Now. In the name of Jesus, do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. Check yourself now. Check yourself now. Check yourself. Check yourself. We'll take testimonies. Hallelujah. See, miracles are happening. Let's, let's just finish up and then we'll have time for testimonies. Hallelujah. Listen. The Lord is ministering to me and I'm seeing a lady. Hallelujah. Please, let's have our attention. The Lord is ministering to me and showing me a lady. You had... I th you saw a cat now I don't know if it's physically or spiritually you saw a cat it came to fight with you and from that time you've not been feeling fine you're feeling like there's something inside you who is the person a cat a cat it's an encounter with a cat the Lord showed me please inside or outside when we get that person let, let the person come out quickly quickly I need to pray for the person this is very demonic and we must deal with it a cat you saw it, it came, I don't know what, what, what transpired, but it's a very demonic thing. Please, when we have the people, let's deal with it. Now, I'm going to pray for the sick, those who are sick. Please, all of you who are sick, just come and line up. If you can form two lines, one in front, one at the back, very quickly. You came here sick. Please, this is a miracle service. We're here for you. We're not in a hurry. Ushers, please coordinate them or protocol whoever. Coordinate them. Just make two lines, one in front, one at the back. Please hurry up, worship us. Give us a very powerful worship while we get the devil out of these people's lives. Thank you. Now it's time for God to minister to the sick. While you're standing, talk to the Lord and say, Lord, it's over. It must leave me now. Exceed.
Abundantly Abundantly I want you to see that sickness for the last time because it's leaving you. According to Shabalaba. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your power to heal. Somebody help me. Please, as I lay hands on you, just begin to check yourself. Check yourself. What's wrong with her? She's sick. What do you mean she's sick? What's wrong with her? Cough. Eh? She's coughing. Oh, cough. Oh, okay. That's all right. God bless you. Sweetheart, look at me. You believe Jesus can heal you? You believe Jesus can heal you? Where are you? A representative should come and hold the mic, please. 
What, what did you I say? saw a cat, a black cat that sustained my mother. Mm -hmm. That devil is a liar. It will leave you right now. Praise God. Tell your mother the end has come. Because the Lord just delivered you in a very mighty way. Father, perfect this deliverance. Now, let her go. Now! Hallelujah. Watch us, please continue. God bless you. See, I want to ask you, hear me. Hold on, let me explain something. There are some of you who, when I pray for you, the way you are looking at me, it's as if you don't believe what I did. I will ask you what is wrong. Are you getting me? I'm just flowing by the Spirit. When I lay hands, some of you are trying to explain and you feel bad that I'm not responding. I don't need to know. The same power will solve the problem. Are you getting my point? Occasionally, I may ask you, it is just, I'm just flowing as the Spirit is leading me, okay? Bless you, worshipers. Please continue. Son, please. Daniel, what? Just about two, three months ago. So I've taken to hospital. First hospital. What was the issue? What's the issue? Maybe like he put a lot of saliva in his mouth. His mouth has burned to one side. It's not working normal again. It's not smart again. It's not working. It looks like an imbecile. But he was not born like this. This thing started just about three months ago. Yes. What? See how wicked the devil is. What happened to him? I mean, what, what? According to him, he plays ball. He's a goalkeeper. According to him, he's a goalkeeper. He's, yes, he said he dived and hit his head on, on against stone. The first hospital I took to, they say it affected his head, his brain. But when I went to a teaching hospital last time, the consultant said there's nothing like that. But he fell to a pediatric uh, clinic, which we were, were given appointment by February. But I believe God will work upon that. I say we should come here this morning. Absolutely. Look at me. Boy, does he understand me? Don't worry, don't worry, sir. It's okay. Look at me. Jesus will heal you right now. Huh? Hmm? Look at the boy crying. It's okay, don't cry. This is why this meeting is put together. If this is the only guy that we heal and he experiences the love of Jesus, let me tell you, this sacrifice is worth it. Are you hearing me? Boy, look at me. Don't cry. Don't cry. It's all right. It's all right. See, look at the fire. Oh, mo, please, please, somebody help this man with a handkerchief. I beg you, sir. Please. Or anything. Please. Let's let this is. Please, please, sir. It's, it's all right. It's all right. You may not know how much he has been spending. You see, this is a wicked thing. You see what pains me? This is why we deal with these things. It's all right. Please. Please. 
please, daddy, it's all right. Because I know why you are crying. You are not just crying because of him. You are crying because your finances are tight. Is that true? This is what the Lord is ministering to me. Is that true? Yes, sir. Why you are crying? You are not just crying. I have cancer. But uh, I'm here for both this my son and my mother. I've been to you about two weeks ago. It's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Please help him with it. Please. Brothers and sisters, when a man cries, the situation, this is not. I think this man is a police officer also. When a police officer is crying, thank God for Koinonia. Boy, look at me. Can he talk? Say Jesus. Jesus. Say in the name of don't worry, I'll pray for you. That demon that is responsible for this, you are leaving this boy now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Out! Now! Come out of him! That issue of partial paralysis is gone. Right now. That saliva is gone. Stand up. Come on, look at me. Shout it. Say Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Give Jesus a shout. Say Jesus. Hallelujah. Look at the Father rejoicing. Look at. Give Jesus praise. This is why this meeting. The Bible says, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh has done me well. Hey. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. Come and dance, come and dance. Jehovah Jireh has done me well. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh has done me well. Come and join me. Stand up, you stand up. Stand up. You couldn't walk very well. Walk now. Come, follow me. Jump. 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 Come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Look at me. You are family members. I prophesy to you, your finance changes now. I prophesy to you, and I use this as a point of contact. Whatever the devil has used to cripple your life, I speak it right now. See, when the Lord does a miracle, there is an anointing. You take advantage of it. Miracles are languages. I command everything that has refused to work in your life. This night, I command it to walk. I command it to walk. I command it to walk. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Lord, the Lord increase you. Please, let's continue. Go ahead and play. God is doing great things. We're still going to take some more testimonies. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Go back, sir. We're going to take a few testimonies. And Benga, let's do it this way. There are people receiving miracles right now. See, the moment you find a miracle, don't sit back. Hallelujah. Uh, ushers will help them. Once you check your body, there are many things changing right now. I want you to move here quickly. They'll come and confirm you and will allow you to share. To the shame of the devil, go ahead. Both those that I'm praying for, those in the congregation, those who were delivered, something happened to you. Go ahead and pray. God is doing mighty things here. Sabarai Kabani Nagode Out! Cheto Kabani 
Stomach, take it out now. Take it out. Now. Let it go. Out. Watch us as you hold them. Make sure you are praying in tongues. You must saturate the atmosphere with tongues. You don't just hold people like that. Devils are living. Whether it's through me or through you, they should go. Yes, Lord, let it go by your power, by your fire.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, what happened to you? Straight to the point. I, I was like, having now I see. sharp pain in my chest. So as the man of God was praying, I felt something very heavy coming out. You felt something coming out? Yes. The devil that wants to remain in your body, he must let you go this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. very light you are free in the name of jesus give jesus praise god bless you hallelujah any other testimony okay, while they come let's just have the testimonies first and hallelujah that's a powerful song he's a miracle old school but powerful songs alpha, you are alpha and omega he's a miracle Hallelujah. the anointing i can do stupid things but i'm not just acting foolishly where's the water is it not the water you brought for me i said you should give her i didn't say you should collect it huh i know why i drank it and i gave her take my dear you just do what i asked you to do take it there are three that bear witness in the earth the spirit, the water. Hold my hands. Out! Now! Lord, be cleansed now. That demon, I see you in the spirit already. Out you go. On your mark, get set, go. Go. Now. Go. Out of her. Out of her. And return no more.
Let her go now. 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 Cancer. That's why I said cancer. Uh, 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 that cancer. What they said. Uh, that what they said. Doctors told you. Yes. Did you bring your report? No. You didn't bring your medical report. No. Prostrate cancer. Uh, that what they said. You believe Jesus will heal you? Why not? Right now. Yes. Daddy, God will heal you right yes. now. How many of you believe God will heal our daddy? Cancer, you are a spirit. And in the name of Jesus, depart from this body now. Together with all the symptoms, prostrate cancer, go. Go. You will go back to the hospital and they will not see a trace of cancer in your body. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I want to pray for somebody. I'm seeing pile, pile. Pile, and this is not just ordinary pile, it's quite advanced. Please, let's hurry up. Pile, I need to prophesy on somebody. Look, let me tell you something. Um, this, is, this is a family. Are you getting my point? This is a family. And this is, this is like a hospital. It's a medical center. When you enter the hospital, if they say remove your clothes and lie down, you won't tell them, do you know I'm an adult? You will just lie down quietly because this is, this is a spiritual hospital where we deal with a lot of nonsense that Satan wants to bring in people's lives. This is not the only person. There are at least two other people. Please, once we pray for you, don't come and stop us after the meeting and say, actually, I was trying. This is a family. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's one more person. Yes, Lord. Now! Thank you, Jesus. You are a wicked spirit. You are living. Shagapata. I see you already. You are going. I tell you, discernment is a powerful gift of the spirit. Content. I'm going to pray that many of us need, need discernment. Let her go. You see, medicine calls it pile, but look at the real thing. It would have been anything. That's why I tell you, go now, please. Don't waste our time. Go, leave. In the name of Jesus. There's one more person. I hope that. Hallelujah. Now, <clears throat> I need to pray for somebody. This is a funny case. Your money used to disappear and miss physically please this is something that has been very serious you will keep money you will count it it's not the same amount. i know some of you are funny until you see it happen in real life to people come out the lord is showing me physically i don't just mean you spent it you don't know what you did this is something that has been surprising you please there is a woman an elderly woman too who is supposed to be here i'm seeing it the lord is showing me please please let's hurry up I don't know why you are surprised that your money is missing when the Bible calls Satan a thief. <laughs> See, it's not about stealing. Do demons eat money? No, no. It's a language in the spirit. It's a symbol of oppression. Why will God mention a case like this? If not that God is leading you in your meeting, will you mention a, a case that doesn't make sense like this? The Lord will set you free. Hallelujah. These are activities of the devourer. Mama, you're welcome here. Jesus Christ will visit you. 
Thank you, sir. You believe that? Yes. Jesus Christ will visit you. Amen. Huh? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Visit Mama even right now. Look, like, brothers and sisters, don't let any man confuse you. Wickedness is real. Are you getting my point? Wickedness is very real. Because, look at me. Where is your mother? In my place. Where is your place? Cameroon. Do you know why I called you? Do, do I know you are from Cameroon? Do you know why I'm talking to you? Because I saw light left this mama and came to you. Hold on, don't cry. What is wrong? Wait, hold on. What is wrong with you? What's wrong with your mother? My mother made, had an accident, break the hand for long things. They went to hospital. She's still suffering with the hand. I was praying and I wanted to move to the line, but I saw light and the Lord said, uh uh, address this lady's situation right now. Your mother. It has not been treated till now. They went to hospital, but it's still there. It's still there. Because, you see, I'm seeing a signboard with obituary. And this thing would have happened since last year. <laughs> Is this year? I'm seeing since last year a sign of obituary, your mother. But we lost our sister too, our elder sister. Hold on now. It's the spirit of death. Hallelujah. We are going to rebuke it because this is what I'm seeing on you too. Look at me. That's why you dream. Dead people. Dead people. <laughs> dead people. You see dead people in your dream. They come to you. Sometimes they are trying to give you something to eat. Yes. Is that true? You, the Lord will deliver you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Go! That wicked spirit. What does the living have to do with dead people? Hallelujah. I need to pray for some people now with this kind of situation. Hold on. Uh, the Lord is ministering to me. There are at least five people. I want you to come and stand here quickly. You see dead people in your dream. Sometimes they try to force food on you. Please, hurry up. The Lord is showing me. Let's just handle this once and for all. If you are still thinking about it, go back to your seat. Dead people, they come to you in your dream and they give you food. This is, this is the Lord. Please, separate the lines. Just stand here. It's a miracle service who will minister to you. Please make sure you don't go anywhere. I'm still going to prophesy. While we are doing that, did you bring your prayer request? Lift up your prayer request. If you didn't write it, you will be cheated. Please, in one or two minutes, any other person who has not written his prayer request, or I'm giving you two minutes, send a text to your loved ones, tell them forward your request quickly. We are going to collect it right now. The Lord gave me an instruction. Usually when we pray for the prayer requests, we'll just go and burn it. But the Lord said, I should pack everything and I'm going to be praying from this night till tomorrow morning on it. That's the instruction the Lord gave me. Let me see the devil that will stop your prayers from being answered. Hallelujah. Now, be healed. write it. If you have not written it, we are giving you one minute. Those online, I hope media has a way of reaching them. Please. You can send the text to your loved ones right now. Tell them, send me your prayer request and you can add it to your paper. We don't read anybody's prayer request. We just pray on it. So if you think you wrote something and there are still some other things you should write, please write it. Please. I have my own prayer request. It's an instruction God gave us. We are not Please, if they need papers, can somebody help them? Okay, the ushers have papers. If you need papers, just wave your hands and the ushers will locate you. Thank you, sir. Let me just finish praying for these people. Be healed, right? Thank you, Jesus. That delay leaves your family now in the name of Jesus. Go! Out! Now! Out! Out by the power of the Holy Ghost. Out. You too. You are following me like an usher. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Please, you can go back to your seat if I've attended to you. Let's just decongest this place. Hold my hands. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, I need to, I need to really pray for you. This thing I'm seeing is not good. We need to pray because I'm seeing a ring. I'm seeing five rings on your hands. This is what I'm seeing. This is a spell. It must leave you now. It will not affect your home. It will not affect your life. It will not affect your home. We break it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shataka balakata. I'm seeing fire burning you. Something is living. It's like an altar on fire. Shake up Radoko Sopra. Go. 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 In the name of Jesus. Shekatataba. I see an altar. And this is like a village. The Lord is showing me. I'm seeing like a village. I'm seeing the horn of a cow inside a shrine. Let it be on fire now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release you breakthrough, supernatural, inexplainable breakthrough because this thing tied the finance of her and her husband. I command its release now in the name of Jesus Christ. Instrumentalist, you are resting. Thank you, Jesus. We are going to deal, see, Immediately I finish with this. We are going to deal with marital issues. Marriage. Delay. This delay in marriage. We are going to handle it right now. Sister, look at me. You. See, you. Where you are. God is going to visit your family. God is going to visit you. Do you come? Come. This is one of your major requests. Come, run and come here. Come. Is it true? Is it true? What, what is it? Why? What is true? My sister, my elder Your elder sister yes, is not married. Yes, Every is just disappointment here and there. And it's one of your major requests. Even as you were standing there, yes, you were telling God to visit you. To let you know God knows you. You will receive your own right now. Hold my hands. Thank you, Jesus. Let it be for her sister. Now! That cause of marital delay, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. God is doing a major work major work in her major work major work every altar of that please if I pray for you just look quickly go look at me my dear This is demonic. Don't put yourself in any sort of God in the name of friends. Eh? Don't let them do all kinds of things. Who made this mark on your body? Look at me. You're a very great lady. You are going to be very wealthy. Very, very wealthy. Don't forget about the body of Christ. Eh? You are an usher. You are acting as an usher. Come. Let me finish with you first before you continue. Come, hold my hands. She's serving in that. So, go. You are in the name of Jesus. You are leaving her now. Go. your hands together please those of you here what what do living people have to do with dead people many of these things you are seeing is not just about you are you getting my point i'm going to pray for you 
Lift your hands. Lift it up. Let her go. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Now I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to release you. Many of you will be surprised. It will leave you. Father, every demonic thing that has to do with dead people that has brought your people in bondage right now in the name of Jesus I'm asking by the power of the Holy Spirit at the count of three let that power break out of your life my God the fire of God is strong one two three come now let the power of God set you free now 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 everything with dead people I separate you now in the name of Jesus. It is done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift up your prayer requests. Oh, you've dropped it. Okay, please bring them outside here quickly. Well, now listen. Supernatural marriages. There are some of you, every relationship you enter, something must happen and it will scatter. But first and foremost, please, before marriage people, if you are in business here, yeah, come out. I don't mean if you want to do business, please. If you are in business, come out. If you come out here and we don't see you doing anything, don't come and lie here before God, please. You have started. You have started. Understand what I'm saying, please. Don't just be emotional. You are doing business that we can see. Everybody knows. Ah. It's time for your business to rise. Don't sit back. This is why we are putting this program. Strings, please. Brothers and sisters, it's part of our mandate to prophesy and release prosperity upon people. And I want you to believe it. Hallelujah. That an anointing will come upon you. And that you will run with the spirit of Elijah. Many of you will be surprised at what will happen from this night. It's not by power, it's not by might. It's by the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands, those who stand here. Every mountain has giants. The bigger the giants, the greater the mountain. Until you conquer the giants that are in every business mountain, you will not prevail. Let me tell you, you can try and do all you know to do. But when those giants are conquered, it will be a landslide victory. And this is what I want to help you do. Lift your hands. But the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Many of you need creativity. Many of you need favor. Some of you just need access. Please lift your hands. No man brings himself out of a hole. You need another person to help you. Hallelujah. I tell you, 
financial mantles will fall upon some of you here but first we need to kick out some giants from the mountain hallelujah lift your hands at the count of three those of you here i just want you to shout just one word jesus very loud you will be surprised that there are some forces tying down your shops and your businesses it will go and i'll release grace are you hearing me are you hearing me my god i feel the power of god help me with the super at the count of three one two three Let him go now let him go release his business by the fire of the holy ghost wicked men want to destroy this guy's business i'm seeing people sitting down and discussing let him go is a popular business this woman social center i'm seeing social center so you do hair i be hair you are is it platin hair is it true? The fire of God is coming on your heart now. Take it now. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing somebody. You do dry cleaning. Dry cleaning. You wash and iron clothes, but this thing has not been working. Dry cleaning. You are not the only one. Dry cleaning. Dry cleaning. Come. Hold your hands together. Sharp akata balada. Lift it up. Shende bada kata la kapa teke teke pa rakata kata pa kata kaka pa kata rante pre kata kapa. Every power holding down this dry cleaning business in the name of Jesus. Go 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 go. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now in the name of Jesus, I send a prophetic word to your business. I command dry bones leave dry bones leave dry bones leave those who are looking for shops we give you shops here I don't care whether they're shop or not we give it to you now wherever you wanted to put your business and they said they will not give you a place go back and get your place those who need capital, may God by favor locate you this night. Even your enemies may they bless you. Hallelujah. Many of you need customers. I don't care whether school is on session or not on session, it's irrelevant. From the north to the south to the east, all over Zaria and beyond, I call for those. Who should patronize you in the name of Jesus? Whoever has spoiled your name so that men don't want to patronize you, I change that testimony now. I change that testimony now. Hallelujah. Oga okay, John, photographers, two of you come. You cannot be serving in Koinonia and be like the rest. Hold your hands. Oga okay, John, look at me. Do you believe in what I'm saying? You believe in what I'm saying? You will be surprised. Lift your hands, both of you. Father, for the sake of your house, for the sake of your house, I hold your business 
step into a new dimension by the power of the Holy Ghost on common access in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ on common access take them to places they would never imagine give them opportunities in the name of Jesus Christ I pray hallelujah go and succeed go and prosper now look at let me tell you one big secret many of you what you is greed are you hearing what I'm saying greed greed some of you don't even tight in your business if you are not faithful in tithing, the devil will eat you up no matter how many days you pray and fast. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your personal tithe is the, as a ministry, we tithe. That's why no devil can touch anything here. Are you getting my point? Be faithful in tithing. Deal in integrity. I bless your business. You are blessed in the city and you are blessed in the country. Where men have deserted you so that no man passes through you. I call you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. Let your gates be continually open to receive the forces of the Gentiles. I command the forces of the spirit to align themselves and begin to walk in your favor. I command the earth to speak for your favor. In the name of Jesus, go and return with your testimonies. Everybody rise up as we pray on the request. Your blessing and honor and glory and power. Please, if you have not submitted your request, do it quickly. Blessing and glory, honor and power forever. Hallelujah. Please, don't burn them. After, after the prayers, please pack them, put them in a bag. Take them to my house. You will hear unusual testimonies unusual testimonies hallelujah in one minute stretch your hands here and begin to pray radically in tongues and say lord now is the time please outside stretch your hands towards the screen testimonies this spiritual technology unto the God that answers prayer shall all flesh come. my God I pray from now let testimonies erupt solve impossible situations 
change impossible situations I stand under this apostolic unction in the name that is above all names let there be the signs of an apostle I command I invoke the heavens let there be a shifting let there be a movement let there be a release of miracles financial miracles marital miracles health miracles job miracles in the name of Jesus Christ Finally, before I prophesy, hallelujah, you know that there seems to be a yoke, please don't be emotional, of marital delay in your family, even if it has not affected you. Come out and stand here quickly. If we are too many, just stand, just stand on the lines. Please. Take this seriously. 40 years, no marriage. 45 years, no marriage. Or ladies, no marriage. Or men in your family, they marry and die. Let's get that devil out of your life right now. Marriage is the will of God. Marriage on time is the will of God. See, brothers and sisters, if you're doubting whether this will happen, go back to your seat. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. It said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. I told you nothing just happens. Nothing. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, all of you here. We need to end this. Many of you just came and met battles you don't know anything about. Yet you are suffering it still. I don't care how old you are. We must open that marital door. And not just to one anyhow man because your age is already advanced. They say let's just manage. No. No. You're going to marry. Listen sisters. Don't marry an irresponsible man. In the name of just trying to manage time. And our brothers, don't just jump and marry any Jezebel that will kill your life and destiny. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. We need to break this thing. Because many families are suffering this thing. And for those who have gotten married, you see that there is no child. And by extension, even praying for barren people right now. Lift your hands. Father, in this November miracle service, I'm praying right now. Many of you will be surprised. The spell of marital delay. Instrumentalist, are you ready? Look at me. What I'm seeing is rain in the spirit. When I count three, I want you to shout Jesus. That rain will drop. Because there are many of you, I'm already seeing rings. Spiritual rings. Covenants. This is what is stopping you. Please shout it with all your heart. My God, as they shout, this rain fall. Listen. Listen. There will be a divorce here. Many of you, I'm seeing rings on your hands as you're standing, meaning you are already married to demonic entities. This is the divorce. We are going to cancel this thing now. Whether you believe it or not is irrelevant. I'm telling you what I'm seeing. Lift your hands. Father, I pray by this power as they count, Lord, I pray that any spiritual marriage that is not of God, that is dying physical marriages, it will catch fire now. At the count of three, get set. One, two, three. Shake it, 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 it. Now, spiritual marriages. Break, 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 break now. Every spirit, every spirit, every spirit, every spirit, let them go. 
release their marital destiny. Every covenant, marital covenant, entered in on your behalf. It catches fire now. We command a divorce. A divorce now. A divorce now. A divorce now. This is what is responsible for the delay of many of you. Pretty lady, no husband. Virtual sister, no husband. Handsome, responsible brother, no wife. People say it's how Nigeria is. There's nothing like that, oh. There's nothing like it's how Nigeria is. I prophesy to you, for many of you, especially for those of you who are of marriageable age, by this time next year, return with your supernatural marriages. I change what needs to be changed. We shift what needs to be shifted. Hallelujah. Sisters, hear me. Wherever your husband is, I don't care where he is. If he's alive, I bring him into your life. Brothers, in the name of Jesus Christ, I prophesy the struggle is over. Now, the struggle is over. You are not a liability to any sister. You are a blessing. Therefore, the sister that will agree for you and mean it from her heart, I bring her into your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. And for any of you that have seen traces of barrenness in your family, they get married, but they can't deliver normally except through CS. I change that report now in the name of Jesus. I change that report now. I change it now. I change it now. Please return to your seat quickly. Return to your seat quickly. Everybody rise. Let me just speak the last prophetic word. And then we'll wrap up. We're out of time. Just leave them. If, if they cannot stand up, just leave them there. Please, quickly, quickly. Everybody stand up in honor of the Lord. Lift up your hands, strings. Boy, state students, stand up. This gentleman have been here all the way. Hold your hands together. Lift it up and look at me. They came for IT all the way from a boy. And God from from Kogi, oh the Kogi guys you will catch fire take it to your campus set every devil in Kogi, drive them out hallelujah lift your hands, look at me you will receive an anointing you will receive a mantle Elijah said if you can see me as I'm taking up, father in the name of Jesus let something mighty fall upon these ones Grace for signs and wonders. Grace for uncommon revelation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where are the boy students who are going back? Quickly come out, please. Save our time. A boy students that came on IT in Zaria. Appreciate them as they come. Come and line up quickly. It's time to catch the fire and take it to a boy instead. All of you, hold your hands quickly. You didn't just come for IT. You came for a spiritual IT. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. You will go back with fire. At the count of three, the power of God will fall on you. Right now, get ready. One, two, take it now. 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 Go and burn. Go and burn. 
set your campuses on fire. In the name of Jesus, heal the sick, cast out devils. Mike, right? Mike, allow where is he coming? Come. Hallelujah. I, I said I was going to pray for him. Hallelujah. I heard that he just signed a check to pay off for this venue. Hallelujah. I'm told. Come. You cannot give into the kingdom and remain ordinary. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. So shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy vats to overflow. Satakatapalakai. Let a financial mantle come, O oh God. According to Proverbs, he said, For the sake of thy house, I desire thy prosperity. I lay my hands upon you. Step into a new level of grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord honor you. I give your seed a voice. Go round the earth, gather your kind, and return back to him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Everybody, please lift your hands. I always tell you that this is the part that I love most. I know we are late, but it's better for your destiny to change. You must return next month with your testimony. Please lift your hands. Many of you don't know the power of prophetic statements. Where's the guy from University of Joss? University of Joss. University of Joss. Where's University of Joss again? Come quickly, please. Save our time. You will catch that fire and take it to your campus. Drive every devil out. Yes, Lord Jesus. For you will do mighty things. Lift your hands, both of you. Lord, we wait on you for fire. Take them to another level, oh God. Take them to another dimension. Fill them with uncommon power. Let their limitations melt. Lord, as these hands come, let an anointing come upon their lives. In the name of Jesus. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. All right, foot me now, quickly. Foot me now. Foot me now. Please come out. Lift your hands, both of you. Hurry up quickly. Hold your hands together, lift it up. Father, in the name of Jesus, May they step into amazing levels of the anointing. Take the anointing to your campuses. Now, now, now. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank you. Lift your hands. Every closed door. Every door that has been closed over your life and your family. I command right now. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Everything called failure in your life, failure, it will become a forgotten testimony in the name of Jesus. That spirit that causes delay. It works for others until it is your turn. Right now in the name of Jesus. Shake it, take it up. I command acceleration. You will run like Elijah. You will run like Elijah. All those trusting God. 
for jobs by 28 December the next miracle service I don't know how God did it Lord shake end to end of every office and give your people jobs receive it receive it receive it hallelujah every terminal disease afflicting you or any member of your family right now i command that disease on your mark set go 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 hallelujah hallelujah everything the devil has stolen in your family joy peace progress please believe what i'm about to speak into your life everything the devil has stolen i prophesy right now receive sevenfold restoration sevenfold restoration sevenfold restoration hallelujah I command the favor that distinguishes a man the favor that separates you from others in the name of Jesus let that mantle of favor let it come upon you now receive it receive it receive it every spirit of death that says you will not see December lift your hands this is very important the way people are dying like chickens every spirit of death I put a mark of the blood and I command it to pass by your family pass by your family pass over pass over hallelujah all those trusting God for admission, you have it finally. I said you have it finally. I don't care who is the rector or who is the visit. That's none of my business. We legislate in this place. Receive your admission. And anyone here that any lecturer is saying you will not graduate, they will sign your paper as you graduate. Hallelujah. Finally, I pray for your finance. We are a blessed people and I pray for you. Right now, whatever makes you not to tithe, whatever makes you not to give and obey the laws that bring increase, whatever makes you feel God is cheating you, I curse you away from that deception. Receive the giving grace. Receive the giving grace. Receive the giving grace. And I pray, whatever is holding your finance and that of your family, I command you to release it now. In the name of Jesus. You've never made a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Please keep standing. I know we are late. Just give me two minutes and we're out of here. You've never made, please bring the announcement. You've never made a decision for Jesus. Everybody keep standing, please. No moving up and down, please. Inside and outside. This is a very important announcement now. You've never made a decision for Jesus Christ. Please look at me. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There are some of you who have made a decision for Jesus, but you have found yourself derailing. You've backslidden, and you need to return to the Lord. As I count, I'll just count one to four because of time. I know there are people outside, there are people inside, we want to welcome you. Don't be ashamed, run to Jesus Christ right now. The Lord bless you as you come. One, please leave your seat and come. Quickly, quickly. Two, don't be afraid, don't be ashamed, please. Inside and outside. Hallelujah. Run to Jesus Christ. It's time to make everything new. He died for your sins. Three, please quickly, quickly. Don't just stroll around, run. Run as though they are calling you to give you a gift. Run as though they are calling you to give you a gift. Because it's a gift, the free gift. 
Hallelujah. Finally, four. Hallelujah. You can still join us. God bless you. Thank you. Lift your hands, those of you here. Thank you for coming. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I believe you died for me. Today, I make Jesus Lord of my life. Hallelujah. From today, I denounce sin and Satan. I declare that I'm a child of God. I'm born again in the name of Jesus Christ. Satan, live my life. The power of sin over my life is broken. I'm a child of God. Let her go. You are hearing her confession and you are still remaining. Let her go. I'm born again in Jesus name. Thank you so much for making this decision. We love you. We appreciate you. We celebrate you. I'd like you to follow the Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share it to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain